didn't see you there. Just trying to catch a sneaky mouse. Ugh, it's about that time, eh? Alright. Oh, sorry about that. Darn mouse is trying to live rent free. Not in my house. Alright, where are we? Lesson three talks all about rectangles. Rectangles! Y yes, Patrick, rectangles. You get excited, huh? All right. Starting out our notes, a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. In other words, if we look over this rectangle, angle A, B, C, and D are all right angles. Remember, right angles are 90 degrees. And the thing to note is that it says a rectangle is a parallelogram. And since a rectangle is a parallelogram, then the rectangle has all the properties of a parallelogram. Makes sense, right? And hopefully we remember there are five properties of parallelograms. And those five properties are the opposite sides are congruent, the opposite sides are parallel, the opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary, and the diagonals bisect each other. So those are the five properties of a parallelogram, but a rectangle has all five of those, but takes it just one step further and adds two new properties on top of those five. And one of those properties was that all angles are right, not wrong, right, but we also know that the diagonals are congruent. So we already knew that P or JP and LP were congruent to each other because it bisects it and MP and KP are congruent to each other. That's the property of a parallelogram. They are, um, they bisect it. But rectangles take it one step further and they say that the diagonals not only bisect each other but are congruent. In other words, JL and KM are congruent to each other. There's a statement, JL congruent to KM. Now, one thing I want to note is because the diagonals not only bisect each other, but also are congruent, there's a really cool thing that happens in rectangles. So if I were to look at JP and LP, I know that those two are congruent to each other, bisect it. But because JL is congruent to KM, I also know that those two pieces of a diagonal are congruent. So all four pieces of the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. Pretty nifty. All right, number one, a rectangular park has two walking paths as shown. If PS is equal to 180 meters, let's fill that in right away. PS right there, that is 180. And PR is equal to 200 meters. PR is this diagonal, and that is 200 meters. I want to find QT. QT is this diagonal right here in red. Looks pretty cutie. Huh. Um, so I want to find that. But if we remember, I just said in a rectangle, all four pieces of the diagonal are congruent to each other. In other words, RT is congruent to QT, is congruent to PT, is congruent to TS. All four are congruent. And we also know diagonals bisect each other. So if this whole line PR is 200 and it bisects it, then RT is 100, bisects it, cuts it in exactly half. And I also know PT is 100 and 100 and 100. All four are 100. Now, I just found exactly what I was looking for. QT is 100. Part B, new information, let's erase the old. If TS is 120, TS right here, 120. Find PR, and PR is this full diagonal. And 
we're going to use that same information again. I know that diagonals bisect each other, and they are congruent to each other. So all four pieces are congruent. Therefore, um, TS is 120. RT is 120. QT, 120, 120. You get a 120, you get a 120. So all four parts of the diagonal are 120. And I want to find PR, this full diagonal. If half of it's 120, the other half is 120, I know the whole thing has to be equal to 240. All right. Number two, quadrilateral K, J, K, L, M is a rectangle. If K, J, L, K, J, L is 2x plus 4 and J, L, K is 7x plus 5, let's fill that in, I want to find x. So I know these two angles. And if we remember from the previous notes, it's not a property of parallelograms per se, but it is a property of parallel lines, which in turn uh, is a property of parallelograms and is now a property of rectangles. Just take it one step further. So if we imagine that ML and, J and JK are parallel, given by these little arrows, and it, they are because it is a rectangle, therefore it is a parallelogram, and JL is the transversal that is cutting those two parallel lines, how would I um, characterize or compare these two angles that I was given? Well, they're both on the inside, so they're interior. Are they on alternating sides or are they on the, they on the same side as the transversal? They're on the same side. Therefore, these are consecutive interior angles. And what do we know about consecutive interior angles? Well, hopefully we remember that they are supplementary. In other words, they add up to 180. So I can take my 2x plus 4, add it to 7x plus 5, and set it equal to 180. Now I'm going to combine like terms. 9x plus 99 equals 180. Subtract my 99 and divide by 9, a lot of 9s. x equals 9. Even more nines. All right. Now, before we talk about this, I want to figure out number three and what it's asking. And we will come back to that. So quadrilateral PQRS has these vertices given with the ordered pairs. Determine whether PQRS is a rectangle by using the distance formula. Now, it says, hint, find the lengths of each side and find the lengths of the diagonals. So now let's look at this. It was just right above number three on your notes. It says uh, opposite sides must be blank and diagonals must be blank. If I'm given this shape right here, if I know that the opposite sides are congruent, then what do I know about this shape? I know this is a parallelogram. Now, I want to take it one step further because I don't want to know if the shape is a parallelogram. I want to know if it is a rectangle. And I know in a rectangle, the diagonals must be congruent. In other words, those two red lines need to be congruent to each other also. So if I can prove that the two opposite sides are congruent to each other, and the diagonals are congruent to each other, then I can say that it is a rectangle. And we're going to be using the distance formula here. So let's start out with PQ. So P is negative 5, 3. Q is 1, negative 1. So plugging that in, we get the square root of 1, which is our x of our q minus our negative 5 squared plus 1, or negative 1, which is our y of our q minus 3, which is our y of our p 
squared. And then we simplify one minus a negative five. Remember, subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. So one plus five is six. And then one or negative one minus three is equal to negative four. Remember, we are squaring both. I always like to put this negative in parentheses to make sure that I know I'm squaring a negative four. Because if you don't, it'll tell you that four squared is 16, and then you will try to subtract 16, which is not true. Make sure you square that whole term. Keep it in parentheses that whole time. So when I simplify that, I get 36 plus 16, not negative 16. Add those together and I get the square root of 52 for PQ. Now for RS, I plug in the points for RS, where S is my x2, y2, and my R is my x1, y1. So I get negative 7 minus a negative 1 squared plus 0 minus a negative 4 squared. Again, subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. So I get negative 7 plus 1, which is negative 6, and 0 plus 4, which is 4. Square both. Make sure you put it in parentheses. Even if you want to put this positive term, this 4, in parentheses also just to be consistent, go for it. Simplify that. I get 36 plus 16, and I get the square root of 52. So RS is equal to the square root of 52. PS. I plug in negative 7 minus negative 5 squared plus 0 minus 3 squared. Make sure that you look exactly where you're getting these points. I have them filled in right now, but pause the video. Make sure you know exactly where I'm getting these points. And then, again, subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. I get negative 2 squared plus negative 3 squared. In parentheses, squaring a negative is a positive. So I get 4 plus 9, and I get the square root of 13 for PS. QR. Negative 1 minus 1 plus negative 4 minus a negative 1 squared. Minusing a negative is the same as adding a positive. So negative 2 squared plus negative 3 squared, which is 4 plus 9, giving me the square root of 13. So I look at the sides. I have the square root of 52 square root of 52, and the square root of 13, square root of 13. I see that these two match each other. Therefore, I know this shape so far is a parallelogram. But to prove that it is a rectangle, or to see if it is a rectangle, I need to know if the diagonals are congruent to each other. So the diagonals are PR. So going from P to R, we have negative 1 minus a negative 5 squared, plus negative 4 minus 3 squared. And simplifying that, we get 4 squared plus negative 7 squared. 16 plus, make sure you squared a negative 7 here. 16 plus 49, and I get the square root of 65 for PR. And QS, I get negative 7 minus 1 squared plus 0 minus a negative 1 squared. Simplify, square the negative here. 64 plus 1, and I get the square root of 65. So, parallelogram based on the sides. The two diagonals are congruent to each other. Therefore, is it a rectangle? Yes, it is a rectangle. And we know that because the si opposite sides are congruent, making it a parallelogram, but then we'll take it one step further and say that the diagonals are also congruent. Quadrilateral WXYZ is a rectangle. It's given. Awesome. If XW is 3, WZ is 4, and XZ is C, I want to find C and WY. So filling that in, we see that is 3, 4, and C. Now, if we look, given these three pieces of information, I see in this rectangle, I have a triangle. Not only a triangle, but a right triangle.
triangle. If you can't see it, there you go. Now we see it. We just pulled this out, and now we have a right triangle with side lengths 3, 4, and C. It kind of gives it away in the, in the directions. But how do we solve this? We know that we need to use the Pythagorean theorem. Hopefully we remember the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where we would get 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. Make sure you remember the hypotenuse, opposite of the right angle, is always what it's equal to. It's always your c. So we get 9 plus 16, 25, and then square root both sides to get rid of the square, and we get c is equal to 5. Now, I want to know what wy is also. Now, if I see that xz is 5, and I know it's a rectangle, I know diagonals are congruent, therefore, horribly drawn line wy is also 5, because, remember, diagonals are congruent to each other. Now, so far we've talked about parallelograms, and then now we're talking about rectangles. We're going to talk about more quadrilaterals, but before we move on, I kind of want to make sure that we know all the different properties, because at the beginning of this, I said that there were five properties for parallelograms, but now there are two more on top of it for rectangles, and then we're going to add more. It's just, it's really hard to organize. So, I made this little chart. You can grab it in the room, make sure you fill it in, and keep it close because it will help when you do your homework. So on the top, we're going to fill in the shapes. So right now we have parallelogram. And then on this left hand column, we're going to fill in the properties and then put check marks all in this grid to see if that shape has that property. Hopefully that makes sense. So at the top, there are five properties of parallelograms. The first one is the opposite sides are parallel. Second one is opposite sides are congruent. Third one, opposite angles are congruent. Fourth one, consecutive angles are supplementary and the diagonals bisect each other. So like I said, I'm gonna look at my shape, look at my property, and I know all five of these are properties of parallelograms. So I'm going to put an X, you can put a check mark, you can put a smiley face, you can draw whatever you want. I'm not artistic, so I'm going to put an X. So this tells me that the parallelogram has all five of these attributes or these properties. But today we just learned about a new shape. Well, not new to you, but new um, properties. And it is a rectangle. Now, at the beginning, we said that a rectangle is a parallelogram. In other words, a rectangle has all the same properties as a parallelogram. So we know that a rectangle has all five of these properties also. But we are adding two more that are more specific to this rectangle. That are all four angles are right angles and the diagonals are congruent. So I'm going to put in my x here for these two. And as we fill in more, hopefully we can just look at this chart and see, well, I know that consecutive angles are supplementary, so it is a parallelogram, but also a rectangle. And you can follow that. So keep this close. Make sure you fill this in. Uh, pause the video. Make sure you have all of that in. And that is it for your notes on 4.3. Now we are doing the practice, labeled 4-3 practice. It shouldn't be too bad. Um, front and back of one page, and hopefully you can get it done in a snap. Well, have a mice weekend. Until next time.